Hey guys, welcome back. Long time no seen. I have had a lot of viewers on one of my paint jobs. Um, I have not had much time lately. Um, so what have I been doing? Uh, as you can see, I will start a new period. I have started this project already, and I should have probably have taped it a little bit earlier the process from the start because I know a lot of people that want to see this how it's done uh, I have come a bit I have still a long way to go so I can probably this one will be a more descriptive session where I talk for about 10 minutes and show you different stuff so uh, what I'm doing actually building a Lotus a Super 7 uh, a low cost, uh, in other words. This is the frame that I have been using. So, where am I at this stage? This is where I am. Yes, I have done some work. I have spent, I think, 60 hours or something like that on this so far. Uh, I have... Um, started with the frame uh, when I did the frame I wanted to TIG weld everything just to get uh, nice even welds it's easy I like it and I want to learn more it works uh, rather good if we can zoom in um, I'm using 25 by 25 millimeters 2 millimeters thick um, I used this drawing that I found on net. It's a little bit bigger chassis. I actually built this table just for that. Yeah, it's a little bit messy inside here. So I built this table and started by the frame. I did the whole frame out of the book. Um, I did not weld all the joints together fully before I actually did get the motor in. But almost. Uh, what am I using for this? I bought this TIG welding machine a little bit earlier. It's a 200 amp ACDC. Um, I bought it from Germany directly. A little bit cheaper machine, but it works really, really good. I also have a plasma from them as well. Uh, I did go and get myself a little larger. Uh, because I was using this small 5 liters at first, but hey, when you TIG weld, you need a lot of gas, so I bought this one instead. Um, so I spent like, I think, 40 hours on the frame, getting it together. Um, so what did I use? One of my main tools, let's see if I found it, of course. But to actually get all these joints together, this is what I used. Normal angler. And I used a normal grinder. And then I welded everything together. I me measured it with normal things. Nothing uh, special. When I have welded all the parts together, I put it out on the table again and uh, made sure that it was straight I had a miss of a couple of millimeters from end to end that was due to this here when I welded that one together it actually warped itself a little bit around so I have to split it up again uh, straighten the frame a little bit and um, weld it back together again so now it's actually really really good so that is the frame the basics of the frame. The next thing I did was to lower the engine in. I'm using a Saab 2.0 turbo engine uh, with an Opel Omega gearbox, 5 speed, works like a charm. 150 horsepower engine, uh, a simple machine, works great. You can use a T5 suit and reprogram the engine to get more horsepower if you want that. 
Uh, the car would weigh roughly 700 kilo, so that's quite a few horsepowers per kilo, if you like that, so that's good. Uh, I did put the engine in, I'm not 100% happy with the position. Uh, I did straighten the engine up a little bit, but it is not 100% level as you can see. Uh, that was a compromise, because the gearbox is not 100% level either. They tilt it the other way, so um, either you get the gearbox straight or the engine straight. I will probably lower the engine gearbox roughly 10 to 15 millimeters, and then I will also set the engine a little bit straighter. Uh, this is the um, engine points I have welded together. As you can see, this is on one of the sides. Looks Decent. This one was actually MIG welded, while on this side I TIG welded it, just to see the difference. Um, so that's how that looks. It's not that hard to get it leveled. When you do this frame, make sure you do a notch. It's hard to see here. But I have a notch in the middle on every part that goes straight over and by doing that you know where the middle is. Then you just use a normal angle to measure here and up to make sure that this is straight like that and you also do the same on the engine side over here. Uh, you can also measure this line here. As long as the frame is straight this one should be straight as well. This is not a and must, but you need to have the rear axle and the engine or more like the gear gearbox at the same angle. Uh, you do want to have some kind of Z uh, movement because you don't want the nuts or the parts from the gearbox to the rear axle to go straight. They need to go a little bit like a Z. But the outgoing there should be at the same line like that as the end over there. So that's the important part. Uh, mm. This is the mounting point for the gearbox. As you can see, it do tilt. That's because the gearbox is not straight compared to the engine. I'm really happy with the mountings. Uh, of course there should be some more um, uh, boxing to do, but I would not do that b uh, before I have the ear a rear axle and the seats and all that mounted. Um, so that's basically the beginning of the frame I did. There's a lot of parts I need to order as well. Um, but the next step I have done so far, I want to get all the things in. Uh, I have most of the parts to the rear and the front axles, I will show you those in a short. Um, but I ordered some seats, they are 2 cm wider than the tunnel. That's a little bit of a dilemma, but on the passenger seat I will not use the functionality to move the seat back and forth. So that means it doesn't matter if it is really really tight. I will squeeze them in. The other side I will get some clearance. Let's see if I can walk around. I have put the axle here. It's a normal Volvo 740 or 940 axle. But as you can see, the pinion is not in the middle. It's a little bit to the passenger side and that means I actually can move this side a little bit. Of course I will move this as well because it is way too close. Uh, but this means I would get at least those 2 centimeters off I need for this seat and I will be able to move the seat back and forth. And that is something that my um, the one the one person that is going to get this road legal um, that was a tip from him because not everyone is the same size and he is a little bit shorter than me. And as you can see it is really really tight. So those two centimeters will make it I hope. Um, with those seats in, and with the steering column, and the nose, I hopefully this night I will be able to preliminary mount the steering column, 
I'm still not sure I will be using this one. I do want a snap off wheel because it will be tight sitting in this. So it's really good to have a snap off wheel. But hey, it's mostly a something a nice feature. It costs a lot. So that's it about the first. Um, when it comes to the front and the rear axle, I have several parts lying here. I did order four of these. At the moment, I have a problem because I did get four springs with the same. Um, what do you call it? Yeah, they are at 220 lbs, I think, all four. At least what the paper says. I ordered 350 and 220. 350 for the front. So I'm still arguing with the seller about that. Um, I have several mountings, brackets. I did order rubber bushings, but I also have this classic polyurethane bus bushings. Uh, I am not sure which one I will use yet. Let's see that. Uh, M12 rotor balls for the rear end. When it comes to the I'm, use, I'm probably going to use a K-Link, as it looks like now. Uh, I will show you what K-Link is later on. Um, but, in the end, mounted to the rear axle, I will probably use rubber bushings in the beginning. I will build for rubber bushings, because they are a little bit wider, as you can see. And then afterwards, I can actually just change if I want other ones. So in the end, that will be that like that. And then I have a pipe going from that end to the front. The front is M12, the 12mm rotor balls. Uh, so I will be welding those later on. Why you want those in the front is because when you have movement, this will move back and forth in 3D. Uh, so it's really good to actually have them. You can also move, use rubber bushings in both ends. But this is what I was recommended. For the front, I'm using the Volvo 140 spindles, classic ones. I have bought new joints everywhere. I'm still waiting for the rings I need to have around here. I will show them when they arrive. And the upper end is done. Uh, I need to um, reshape it inside here, but because it is the wrong angle. But those parts is done at least, and I can move them around as I want. Um, I also bought the tubings from that. It's a special type of tubing. Uh, I have paper for um, the strength of the tubing as well. For the rear axle, I did make this um, part that's going to sit around the axle. Uh, they're going to sit like this. Let's see but in the hand. Uh, this one I'm holding in is only for mounting them straight. Because I need to cut those in half, uh, put them over and then uh, clip it together again. So this is just for easing it up a little bit. From those uh, the joints will go back and forth for the axle. So. What is going to happen tonight? I am sorry that this will be a short explanation what it is and how far I have come and all that. And I hope I will do a little bit better on the next one. This is episode 8, just showing where I am today. And I will also just talk a little bit short about where I am going to be later on. So what I am doing today is I am trying to get the seats mounted. I will work a little bit on the steering column, perhaps I get something there mounted, and with some luck I get a little bit further with the rear axle to actually know what I'm going to do here for the seats. Um, so this is the introduction, and hopefully I will get another video up soon. Um, so yeah, thank you.